am the king, 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 king. I am the king, 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 king. I am the king, 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 king. I am the king, 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 king. I am the king, 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 king. Come on out, be, 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 be. I am the king, king, king. I am the king, 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 you will not be. I am the king, 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 the king,
I need therapy. Oh, man. Okay, let me go ahead and help you. Bye. Bye. Say goodbye to the white knights and the crybabies. You can go on over back and get you a kitty meal back in the kitty section. Go on back to your mammy's house because this is for adults only. We don't deal with little boys and they fifis. So, here we go. You guys see the title of the show. Let's get on into it. Let's get on into it. I mean, uh, unless you've been living under a rock, under a rock, under a rock, you know what's going on right now. You know what's going on right now. On the TV show, The Real, Jenny Ma, a Asian woman who's engaged to rapper Young Jeezy, is stirred up a hornet's nest of controversy by just simply saying something that well, what am I talking about? I tell you what, let her say it yourself. But here's how we're going to do this, guys. Before we get into it, I'm going to need to, you guys to keep the engagement up over 50%. Likes, dislikes, it don't matter. Uh, just get them up because if you don't, we're going to end up having the intermission song. And the intermission song sounds like this. And if you don't want me to come through playing that song loud, I'm going to need you to get them up. Um... You know, you would not think it would be such a controversial thing for a woman to say, you know, I want to, you know, submit or something like that to my husband. But apparently, today, it's a problem. Um, Let me see something before we get into it. Again, even Amazing though it's job. a, thank you, even though it's a competition, don't miss out on the best. Moving on. All right, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get on into it. Uh, fair use, fair use, fair use. High value, competitive, successful men marry. They marry. Oh, yes, they marry. They, they marry, they marry, they marry, and they marry. Uh, but who are they marrying? Competitive, successful High value black men marry women like Jeannie Ma. They don't marry women like Lonnie Love. Why 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 is that, Kevin? Well, I think it's gonna be best described by Jeannie herself. Let's get into this thing. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Because this is what started all the controversy. Um, this is what started all the controversy. So let's go ahead and kick it off. You guys be nice, be polite, keep the trolling down because this is going to get heated. So I want to talk about this. You guys, USA Today recently reported that President Trump's nominee for the U.S. Supreme Court, Amy Coney Barrett, has close ties to a Christian religious group called People of Praise who reportedly teach that it's a wife's job to submit to the will of her husband, as the Bible teaches. So far, Barrett has declined to publicly... Now, before she even said anything, all this engaged woman said was that President Trump's nominee thinks that it's a wife's job to submit to her husband, like... 80 plus percent of black women who claim to be Christians purport to be Christians. And she didn't even get out of her mouth good before it started. Shout out to Ike. Discuss her affiliation with people of praise. I did not even know this existed. But this week, Matthew Cochran of the Federalist defended look at these this looks point, on, arguing that look at look at look at this. Look at look at Lonnie Love's face. Unmarried, never married, Lonnie Love. Unmarried, never married, Lonnie Love. Remember what I said? All the brothers are asking for is fit. Lonnie Love ain't been fit for a long time. Cooperative, <laughs> knock it out. She does have the single part, though. And then right down over here, we have none other than another washed-up B-list actress, who thinks she's got her opinion matters for something. 
You know, before you saw her on the Steve Harvey show, she was throwing rose petals at uh uh Prince Akeem or what was that what was Eddie Murphy's character? She was one of them Zamunda rose throwing women. That's who she was. That's her. Zamunda rose thrower. Look at her with this thing stuck on top of her head. You know that ain't her hair. It's stuck on top of her head. Now let's see. Unfit weave. Fit weave. You can't get rid of the weave. I'm sorry. Well, as we keep on going, here's what it got down to. Equality in marriage only breeds resentment. And that just because a woman is submissive to her man doesn't mean it will hold her back in life, highlighting Amy's potential new job as evidence of that. So ladies, this view. I, I, sorry, I'm already <laughs> thinking about my See, she can't even get it out because she know these women are going to lose their mind. I'm sorry. She know they're going to lose their mind. Why is the subject of submission? See, before you can get submission, you can get, need cooperation. Why do unmarried women like Lonnie Love and Garcelle Bouvet think that they have something to tell you women? Not, unmarried. I need you to take a look at their ring finger and it's as dry as French toast. Do you oh, view yeah. this as ridiculous? What we had? Uh, right, right. Do you, do you guys figure, feel as yeah. women? This is crazy. This this, this tension coming submission, up when you hear this. Submission. Garcelle, what? It's that. When word. I think of submission, so think. I think maybe back in the fifties and the forties. But I think what is submissive in the you know twenty twenty? What is submissive? I think we have to define that. And I think for me, it would never work, right? But I think. Stop right there always wanting to redefine something. And for me in 2020, it would never work. That's right. That's why you're going to die alone. This is why you are going to die alone. And good for you. You're going to die alone. So go ahead and go ahead and you know what you need to do. <coughs> Buy that dog. You're going to die alone. And these women are proud, proud to be dying alone. So I have no sympathy. People are like, why are you so rude? Why, you, why do you say some of these things? Because these women don't care. They know exactly what's coming towards them. And they are not only do they know it, they're proud. So, hey, let them have it. Again, Fanny, you ain't been nobody since the 90s. Where they even dig you up at? Talking about it would not work. Who wants to marry you in the first place? It really is up to the couple. I think you have to decide what is submissive. Is it doing cooking everything he wants? Is it having his, you know, bath ready when he comes home? Like, what is it? I think that has to be really redefined, but I'm not down for that. You, you won't get me to be submissive. There are things that I'll give and take in a relationship, but to be completely yeah, submissive. Yeah, that's compromise. Like, even the word obey when you're getting married in a, in a marriage vow, you say obey, but. Notice that everything she said that, notice that. Notice that the things they say when it comes to submissive are automatically negative and conflated. What does it mean to actually have to prepare a meal for your man every day? Well, you got to eat two or three times a day. Understand, these are the same women who would talk about they wanted children, but gotta, you got no problem who gonna cook for the kids? See, when I first started getting hip to, this woman is my age. And when I first started getting hip to this was in the late 80s on, on a college campus. And we used to have these relationship seminars. And we heard these women like her standing up all the time talking about how they ain't gonna submit to no man and do this and don't do that. And they want this modern 50-50 relationship. And I remember standing up in 1989 and saying, got a question. Okay, in this modern 50-50 power couple relationship, do you ladies want children? And across the board, yes, 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 yes. I asked one question, like I always do, and shut the whole piece down. Well, if you ain't gonna cook for him, who is? Cricket ass quiet. 
Because all they had ever associated cooking with is subordinate to a man. Like you got to cook on oh, over a camp. Like you got to go chop wood and make a campfire and cook for a man on a pot that you made out of metal. You've smelted yourself. And then you got to crawl across broken glass and give it to your Lord and Savior in a submissive position. This is the result of baby boomers and single mothers. My, mother, my mother's generation birthed this. And this is what so many men my age have rejected. Think about, this is what it is at 50. Can you imagine what she was like at 20? If she still, if Vivica Fox and all them other cocktails and queens and Lonnie Loves are still like this at 50, you can only imagine what some of the brothers were saying back then. And here is the problem. These women have no idea what working with a man looks like. Are people really doing that these days? It's like, I respect you and I will honor you, but I think the obeying submissiveness is out for me. I think it's so weird when people try to use the Bible for these sorts of things. I think that gets really weird. Obviously, mm. you know, the Bible was written in a different time, a completely different, literally there's parts in the Bible that literally say that you should stone somebody if they eat shrimp in Leviticus. Like Conversation over. Anytime you hear a fool say something like that, say check, please. You're dealing with somebody who is in my Lafiti. Bad faith argument. She is not operating in good faith. You want to go to talk about shrimp and stoning people. I don't even want to talk to you anymore because you're not trying to be reasonable. Think about it. Now, this woman is supposed to be married, but that's the best you could do. The best you could do. Now, understand all that men are asking today is for cooperation. And the men you say you want, you know, this is them. This is why these women end up as single mothers or with beta males, because driven, competitive, successful, productive men. We're not going to negotiate this with you. I'm not going to go back and forth with you because I only deal with a certain caliber of woman. Guys like myself only deal with a certain caliber of woman. And that. And my and dudes like myself got plenty of women trying to get around us. And those women can have their fair share of men trying to get around them. It is a choice for these two to be together. Now, what you have are some uncompetitive women trying to make the best choice out of poor choices because off the rip, who would want to get with Garcelle Bove or Lonnie Love? I mean, given the given the alternative of the two, Garcelle is more physically visually appealing, but her attitude is just as stank. We have to recognize or not color what that your means. hair. Into, right. wow. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's literally really extreme things that are said. I think God also gives us wisdom, and I think that uh, th there are also other parts of the Bible that recognize how important and how essential. Uh, a woman is to the world and um, and to a marriage. And it, it speaks on equality. Like for me, I just feel like the concept of being me submissive to my husband, but what is, is he not submissive to me as well? I think for me, I think that's what give and take in a relationship is about. It's about compromise and. Feel sorry for you, bro. Feel sorry for you, bro. Your woman just got on, on camera and said, hey, the Bible says we're equals. And you submit to me and I submit to my... Uh, all out of context. Can you imagine what it would be like that dude going into the barbershop after this bit aired? You basically just took your, your husband's gonads and put him in your purse. Because anytime he goes around anybody else, he'll be like, damn, son. That's what you married to? And don't let her be the breadwinner, which my gut says she probably is. I don't know. But uh, ow. all bad. This is why I say do what you want, guys. Do that 50-50 stuff if you want to. 
formula for this. Stop smiling when you see that picture, Jeannie. <laughs> no, Jeannie it's so was cute. Like, Why? But I, I feel I like, love it. like <laughs> this just takes us backwards, you guys. As women, we fought so hard to be equal and viewed equal in our relationships, yeah. in our workplaces. And the concept of being submissive has a negative connotation to it. I think when they're talking about her being a boss and obviously having this incredible position that she may be taking, Guys, there are people who are bosses in their workplace and then they want to come home and let their husband lead. That again is their choice. That is not them being submissive. Right. That is them that's choosing about. It's about the that that's what decisions. they want. It's a difference. Right. That's right. No, you know what the thing is, is that what works for a couple works for a couple. I can't. Shut the fuck up, Lonnie Love. I've been wanting to say that for a minute. Shut up. I and men like myself absolutely don't care what your swole up ass has to say about anything. You are my opinion, in my opinion, you and women that have your attitude are enemies to women, black women in particular. You are my enemy when it comes to dealing with black women. And I'm going to expound on that more later. I don't care who you're dating right now. You're supposed to be happy. But yet you still find a way to get your big swole ass up here and still have an attitude problem about something. Seek help and shut up. That's it. I can't judge them because that works for them. The problem that That's I right. have with this whole submission talk is that... Um, People will bring it over into real life. There's no way that women... Politics. I feel women in this country can't have real equality. This... Mm, this woman is about to make the point of you can have that submission stuff at home, but when I'm in the world, treat me as an equal. Cool. No protection. No door open. No nothing. You are a genderless being. That means you got to get it out of the mud just like I do. Got no problem with that. That means at work and anywhere I don't see gender. Guarantee you'll break and women like you will break long before men like us will. Fine. 100% fine with that. Don't cry. Don't say shit. Don't ask for nothing. Don't, don't, don't ask for any, any, any girl push-ups in the world. You need to get it out of the mud and come stand up, square up, and compete with men. Just because you weigh like a heavyweight don't mean you can play like a heavyweight. If you have this same old-fashioned, outdated type of thinking. Right. Now, in a marriage, right. that's fine. But if he thinks like that Not for a woman and she thinks like that for herself, then when they go outside, they, they're trying to spread it. And that's what you see right now. Yeah. So now you're getting articles about, oh, they should be, you know, women should be submissive. So now you have women that necessarily aren't in relationships questioning, well, should I do be? She said... You got women out here submitting at home in a happy, cooperative relationship with their men, and they out here trying to spread that in the world like it's a disease. Did you hear what she said? They out here trying to spread it. Like, if you want to be submissive in your house, but in the real world, we compete. Fine. I can't wait to hear about the time you get booped. Something happens. Oh, I don't want to wish nothing bad, but... I don't, ladies, I don't think you want the world Lonnie's talking about because that means you're going to need to be 51% of the military, 51% of the construction workers, 51% of the police force, the fire fo firefighters, ditch diggers, trash men, all the crappy jobs. You're gonna, we're going to need y'all to be 51% of all of it. And we're going to need it to be done at, at, the, at the work, at minimum level of the worst man. We're going to need you to be 51% of all that. 51% of the homeless population, all that. You go, I need you to be my equal, Lonnie Love. Guarantee if you had to get out here and pay like your weight, that weight would drop off of you because you couldn't make it out here. So you sitting up in there, air conditioning that men have made, building that a man has made, all this stuff that men have made, and then going to act like butter won't melt in your mouth. Shut the French toast up. I'm tired of hearing you.
way? Should I do that? Right. And that's not true equality for women. So that's the reason why I have a problem with it. What you do in your relationship, that's on you. But don't put, yeah, don't, it don't let it go out to the outside. That's what I th I'm saying. But even that, that is still a choice. That doesn't mean that you're being submissive because you're being forced to be submissive. That doesn't mean you're being submissive because that is what is required of you as a woman. That is a choice. Yes, right. And choice. because of that, I want to give you guys the actual definition of... And thank you, Jenny Ma, for listening to all that and coming back and g up. Because I know people in the chat room are going crazy. You guys can have your opinion. Keep it respectful. But here's the thing. I need you guys to get the likes up. And uh, we're going to need... We got 3,700 people in here. And uh, we're going to need these like 3,900 people because we're going to open the call lines. Because I want to I wanna ask a question. You may not like the word submission, ladies. But do you like, but do you like dying alone? You may not like the word submission. Do you like the word single? Because men especially competitive men, successful men, high value men are not going to marry, are not going to marry you. They are not going to marry you. They will marry Jenny Mai. They'll marry Becky, My Ling, and Marisol, but they will not marry you. They will, well, I don't get, they will marry Jenny Mai, Becky, Anu, and Marisol, and women who think like her. They will not, will not, will not, will not, won't marry you. So that means you will die alone. Oh, you don't think you'll die alone? Oh, yeah, that's right. You can date out and deal out. That's right. But when is Lonnie Love's wedding? Yeah, she ain't got one. Submit. And then I want to explain okay. how I see this. So the actual definition of submit is to accept or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another person. So I'm going to say right here that I, Jeannie Mai, going into my marriage... I want to submit to my man. Big ups to Jenny Mai for coming back and saying, yeah, fuck what you're talking about. Jenny Mai got a man at home, and I am going on the record saying straight up in front of all this BS, I want to submit. See, Jenny Mai is about to tell you that she is a strong woman. But one of the things that strong women, actually truly strong women, learn from their mistakes. It doesn't take, it, you're not strong if you don't learn from your mistake. You're just a stubborn, pig-headed fool. Strong and stubborn are two different things. Get back into it. Tell Let them, me explain. Jeannie. When I hear this wow. definition, like you just said, Adrian, Submitting has a negative connotation. It means that you are less important, you are lower than that person that you're submitting to. It usually can be like, you know, referenced as somebody who works lower than you. And that's not what I'm referring to here. Yeah, but what I've cool. really learned in my life for my definition of marriage, I'm not saying what I want works for everybody. I'm saying for me, right. I'm a very- Say something. Ain't that the modern woman's dream? I can get out here and lead, bring home the bacon fried up in the pan. But when I get home, I have picked a man that I am comfortable submitting to him and, and letting him lead. See, what these other women on the panel have a problem with is they cannot, they either do not, but I don't think they can. I don't think women like Lonnie Love can get a, a man on Jeezy's level. And you guys know I'm not a big high-value man as an entertainer or an athlete, but for this one, we'll make an exception. Lonnie Love can't get a man on that level. She fails the fitness, she fails the fitness component. Lonnie Love can't get a man on that level. She fails the cooperativeness component. So she has to get what she can get. And and then go act like there's a problem with men. No, there's a problem with you, a diet, and a gym. You and some therapy. Old fancy sitting up there. Wow. You're going to say that, Jenny? Yeah. Do you not see that ring is as big as her middle finger? And y'all are sitting up there as two unmarried, unengaged women not learning a damn thing. You aren't strong. You're stubborn. See? 
You hear that bullshit? So worried about a word. These, this is why women like her will never, ever, 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 ever get a high value, successful, or a competitive man. See, smart women are willing to be led by high value men, competitive men, and successful men. That's smart. Because the leader, the cover, takes the first bullet, takes the arrow. I got to be willing to die for mine. You know, I've talked about this whole thing, looking for my next ex-wife. Tell you this right now. Tell you this right now. As a man, you have to be willing to lead. And if you want that 50-50 thing, cool. Don't deal with a 100% man. Because he's not going to go back and forth with you. He's not going to go back and forth with you. He ain't going to play games with you. He ain't going to do a whole lot of that stuff with you. Understand something. Smart women are willing to be led by high value men. Smart women are willing to openly declare their inability and unwillingness to lead. You can do it, but do you want to? And are you cut out for it? You're not. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you're cut out for it or you want to. And truly smart women need no nuance to declare their voluntary submission. That's why I like what about what Jeannie said. She didn't back down. She's like, uh-uh, I can do all this stuff. I've done it. I don't want it. I don't want that responsibility. I like the fact that he's doing it. And I'm going, I'm saying it loud, proud, voluntarily in front of everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm able to. And I, I'm able, but I'm no longer willing. So therefore, I'm unable to do it. You got it. No nuance, no gray area. They kept trying to get her that, well, I, it's over here. No, no. She was like, that uh, That ain't it. That ain't it. She's like, because when I do that, I'm, I'm she said, because when I step into those areas, I'm a danger to myself and everything I'm building. So I got to check that of my own self. And she got a man that is knows what he wants. See, let me tell you something about high value men, competitive men. Let me just tell you something about competitive and productive men. We don't have time to play games. That's why I say time is the most valuable resource for a man. Let's just go ahead and pop some collars. Understand something. Men are the kind of the kind of men you ladies say you want. I don't think many of you can handle them. Because number one, you got no get no time for game playing. A lot of games you want to play with uh Tim Tim and Nug Nug and all that stuff, you ain't got to do that with us. I'm busy. These dudes are busy during the day. They ain't sitting around trying to check in to see what you're doing and check in with this, check in with that. I got shit to do. These guys got shit to do, stuff to do. Men like that are looking for a woman who wants to play her role and get on his team. Job position field. So he can move on with the process of purpose. You don't want to have to keep coming back and checking. You happy? You safe? What's going on? Blah, 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 blah. No, no, you looking for you looking for uh, uh, something different, some sort of 50-50, blah blah blah. And I'm gonna tell you, the kind of man you're looking for is not really attractive to other women. Your man is going to get hit if you the kind of man you say you want. You better be prepared to compete for him because he is going to be attractive to other women. Other women are drawn to power, money, and status. When women see men moving, movement, progress, com competition, and productivity is sexy. So you may be the think you're cute and all this other kind of stuff. Women, your beauty goes up and down. Men's continue to go up. But what you know is those, especially the two sisters on the panel, they need the spotlight. They need to be on top. And that's fine. Know thyself. And Garcelle is by herself, and Lonnie has got bottom shelf bread. Cool. The only problem is Lonnie decides to keep injecting herself into things with brothers. And the thing is, we don't want you. I'm going to just say it. Competitive, productive, successful, high-value brothers don't want Lonnie loves. Never have, never will. So you can stop speaking on them. Don't want you. You can't give it away. 
to the Garcelle Beauvais, the, you know, she was once very attractive, but, you know, her attitude makes her ugly. And she, and while she may physically be able to get it, that's all she can do is get it. Men, the competitive, productive, high value men demand, demand cooperation. And they're not going to keep asking for it. See, I don't think a lot of you ladies know what it means to get, deal with a dude that says what he means, means what he says, says it up front, declares and keeps on moving. That's why it's hard for a lot of, a lot of women to date a man that's higher than them because you're not, you're not used to the game plan. Very direct. I like you. I want to see where this goes. I find you sexually attractive. I like to have sex with you. I mean, very direct. Not all this back and forth and a text to this and that. No, no, no. Direct. Because time is important. Let's open the call lines. Let's see what's going on. Because I know it's tripping in here. I know it's tripping in here. Guys, we got to get these lights up. We are only down to um, uh, 1,900. We got 5,400 people in here on 2,000 likes. I'm going to open the call line. Open the call lines, but we need to get these likes up because I'm I'm honest, I'm I'm gonna be honest, ladies, understand something. There's a little tongue in cheek, a little human here, but I'm telling you, I speak to the kind and caliber of men that you ladies wish you had as husbands. Or at least long and here's the thing, many of you don't even want to say the word husband because you don't believe you can find them. I'm sorry. I got men like this in my group and I and I deal with men like this. Yes, you do. Oh, you want? Uh, there's no hope. Well, there's a lot of hope. There's hope for women who are who. There's hope for women who are hopeful. So, what are you gonna do? Are you like Lonnie, or are you like Jenny? Because here's another thing: the Jenny, my, I didn't even get into the race component, but I said it the other day. These non-black women are coming after black men. They are coming for the for the multi-millionaire black men in athletes and athletics and entertainment. That was the first wave. The second wave was going on. They're coming for the businessmen. That's where they're going at now. The $70,000 and up brothers, that's who they're coming after next. They went for the athletes and entertainers. That's over here. The high value Henry's have always been on the, on the, uh, with a target on their back. I'm in this group, but the, uh, what the business class, the successful, productive entrepreneurs and guys like that, the $70,000 and up brothers, the top 30% and up, oh, they're coming for this. So if the athletes and entertainers are over there, they don't even us. And then if the top 10%, top 5%, oh, that's such a small number. You know, those are unicorns or whatever, whatever. There's only, there's only three of them in the world. Okay, no, no, we're talking about the top 30%. Top 30% that eventually feeds into the top 10%. Uh-oh. That's women. I mean, those are men that a lot of you women could talk to. They're in your area. They're in Cleveland. They're in Cincinnati. Yes. They're in Orlando. They're in uh they're in any NBA city. Maybe not NFL. They're in NFL cities for sure. They're in they're in international cities for sure. In NFL cities for sure, but in NBA cities. They're around this country. Why can't you get one? Why can't you get one? Are you more like Lonnie Love than you think? You got more pins. You see, more like a lot of these women on YouTube always got something. Well, the numbers, the facts, the things. Why can't your big head self get one? Why? Because they're out here. Because if Jenny Mai can get them, and if Mylene can get them, I mean, if Jenny Mai can get them, and Marisol can get them, if they're coming to get them in your neighborhood, you look around and the young boys, from high school to college, are already going with uh, uh, Marisol and, and Angelique or whoever, the Hispanic women. Why can't you? Oh, let's talk about it. Get them up. Get them up. Get them up. Get them up. Because the call lines are opening because I want to hear from the ladies. Who do you think had it right? Was it Marisol? Or was, it, was it Jenny Mine? Was, was she on or something? Or is Jenny Mai full of crap? And Lonnie Love know what she's talking about. Why is but why is Jenny Mai getting married and Lonnie Love ain't? <laughs>
Get to deflect questions to me. This ain't about me. This ain't about me. And trust me, this when Kevin decides to get married, if Kevin decides to get married, I get married a hell of a lot sooner than you can. Right now. Since though you ladies who are not married to not always, why aren't you married? Oh, poor babies. See, when it, you, a lot of you are going to have to understand something. Just because you think somebody's losing doesn't mean you win. I'm a successful guy. And I have options. I don't talk about my personal life. But uh, trust me, when it, when and if I decide to put my personal life, any of it, on the screen, you're still going to find something wrong. So guess what? Better question is, why are you in on Friday night asking about a man who's obviously can do better than you? See, that's more of those same old, same tactics. Here we go. Jenny Mai. What what could what could sisters learn from this? What could women learn? I'm not even say sisters. What could women learn from this? Because what you heard was a lot of modern feminist kind of stuff. And that's fine if that's how you want to live your life. But the kind of men that you ladies say you want, they don't want women like that. They don't want women who are strong and independent don't need no man 
I mean, how many of you women are rushing out to, to go get you a, a Dan or, or James or whatever that dude's name is? How many of y'all want that dude? I mean, seriously. I mean, for the but the woman who asked about me being married, I can, you can go ahead and get on. Go ahead and get on and cam up. Let's see, are you fine enough for me to marry? Can you even qualify? I mean, I'm going to start talking shit to some of y'all. Get on the camera and let's see if you can even meet the minimum standard. Because if you don't meet the minimum standard, you can't ask me a question. Uh, while we're waiting for folks to call in, I'm like you're liking the, the three-piece good. Uh, decided to grab a new piece of neckwear to gay today. We'll be rocking that tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Kind of love the self-spot tie. Thank you, Tom. See? Here we go. Classy young man. And I will say this, too, to the... Um, for the longest, women have been, you know... And I don't believe this is all women. I honestly don't. I don't believe this is all women, but... For the longest, you've had women like, you know, the women that were on that panel talking to other women, discouraging them or telling them that being with a man or marrying a man or being submissive or cooperative to a man is somehow going to make you a slave. That's all you really heard from. That's that's what I heard from those women that by saying submissive, that made you a slave. That meant you had no choice, no words. You were basically no, you were a pet. You just, or you had to follow orders. Who has ever, ever seen women in general, black women in particular, in mass, operating like that? When have you ever seen a a black man say and black women do? My great grandmother was born in eighteen ninety two. Eighteen ninety two. And she didn't jump when her husband said jump. My grandmother. My grandfather led the house, but we knew that we knew that Big Mama had power. Where's all this fear of being somebody's slave and being down here like this bullshit Lonnie Love was talking about? Where's that from? I tell you where a lot well, some a lot of this bullshit comes from that color purpling of the black community. You have never seen that in mass. You, I I mean I, I'm I'm challenging anybody. If you've seen it in mass, come on, come on and talk, tell me where you've seen it where women have cooperated or been submissive to men and they've been treated like slaves, second class citizens, no rights, no voice, no nothing. Because what I've seen is just the opposite. I've seen women be protected, cherished, and cared for. Where is this coming from? The color purple. And I know, never seen it, but act like it exists. Why are women so afraid to commit? Why are you ladies so afraid of submission? What is it about submission that terrifies you? Because you want the outcomes. You want a man that's competitive. You want a man that's productive. You certainly want a high value guy. You want a man who can pay the cost to be the boss. You want to be a stay at home mother. You want to raise babies and not have to work. Cool. I got guys like that. I dropped the oh I dropped the I dropped the wrong link. 
Thank you, Jillian. That's why nobody's getting on. Uh, I still have some stuff to get out, but um, but here's the thing. I really want to know what ladies are afraid of. Here's a late. They think it's control. Here's the link. Ladies join the show. That's one of my uh, sweethearts. Uh, I'm going to, I got to come up with a name. When I was in on the yard, I, I read, I was in charge of the Capital Sweethearts. But the but the ladies of the mix, they are a special group. I am so impressed with the women over there. These ladies are holding their own mixers, going to their own teas. Every time I check in on them, I'm just like, damn, they are doing it. They're getting better and better. And I'm telling you, brothers, I am very careful of the men I put in that group because these ladies are on another level. I'm not going to have guys coming over. The, you can't bring any of this YouTube gender war bullshit over there. These are marriage-minded women who understand that they need to do what they need to do. Look, different caliber of women. You can't bring that bullshit over there. And men, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. I'm very impressed with these ladies. Very impressed. If you would love to join, just understand something. That um, now I have women over there that I've been watching for a while and I trust them en enough to, because now it's a it's a place where ladies, you know, women in the group are, are, can help cultivate other women in the protection of a man's space and they have their own space. So the women have their own space to talk amongst each other and do their own stuff. And they're in the presence of men, and the men are doing their thing, networking all sort of stuff. Brothers are shooting their shot, but then like the ladies come into the group and they're automatically over here with the ladies. And if you have women that are kind of up here and they're like, "Oh, come on, sis, let me let me kind of tell you how it moves," and you know, and there's room to fail, room to grow. You know, you don't have to be a perfect woman by any stretch of the imagination. You know, it's, I'm very realistic with this stuff. But I, I am super proud of these ladies of the mix. Hey, hey, and and I'm 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 even more proud of the men though, because I know some of the some of the guys I can't say their names. With. When I'm sitting here looking at men talk about getting married, I'm like, I should be charging for this shit. <laughs> All right, here's what I need you to do. Um. All right, this. Boy, howdy. The Mix is my group on Facebook. Um, moderators, Jillian, please drop the link to uh, The Mix. Um, I will have my first my first mixer. It will be in Atlanta, Halloween weekend. Um, right. You know, New York City, I was thinking about doing a mixer here or a meetup here, but it's just kind of shut down. I don't, I don't know where I would put it, and I'll be in L.A. in a couple of weeks, but um, I'm not one of the people who, I believe in creating hope. Make a, you, if, there's a, if there's not a door, you make one. Uh, here we go. The link is in it. There we go. Now we got people coming in. All right, you need to make sure you connect your microphones. So I can hear you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. None of your microphones are connected. Guys, when you are connecting, you need to click the button that says call in audio and video. I need to hit the top button on your mobile device. That allows you to join with your audio. Because all of you guys are in here right now without your microphones on. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Here we go. Hello. Amo. Amoya. All right. You need to turn you to low. Hello. You need to turn on you. You need to turn YouTube off in the background. 
Everybody in the chat, everybody in the Zoom room, you need to turn YouTube off. If you're in Zoom, you can hear the show. You need to turn YouTube off. Hello, how are you? Good. So, uh, high value men, competitive men, marry women like Jeannie Mai, not Lonnie Love. What do you got for me on the subject? Uh, I totally agree with you. Uh oh. <laughs> what happened? Did you- did you expect me to not agree with you at all? Uh, well, no, I, I just want, why do you agree? Um, because I've seen the opposite and it doesn't work. Hmm. How old are you? I'm 27. 27. Um, you, do you want to get married? Yes, I do. Uh-oh. What part of the country are you in? Uh, I'm in uh, Arizona. Arizona. Um. So you say you've seen the opposite and it doesn't work. Did you see that in your private, your own life or what? No, I saw it with my grandparents and I saw it with my parents. Okay. Um, have you ever, have, when was the last relationship you had? Christine, go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, it was last year and it lasted for three months. Three months. Okay. So prior to COVID, I mean, so what's the longest relationship you've ever had? Uh, it was... Two years before, and it lasted six months. Okay. Christine, you can unmute. Why, why such short relationships? Uh, I tend to move a lot. Okay. Uh, like, what, very, do you, what do you do? Uh, I'm an engineer. Uh, so you move with your career? Uh, no, I moved for school a couple of times, and then I moved for my career twice. All right. So if you want to get married, um, and you and you know what I'm about to say. Danger zone. Yes. Um, six months and three months. That's not a lot of time with anybody. I know. If 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 it was a if it was a muscle engineer, it would atrophy. <laughs> so so what's the plan? Um. I don't really have one other than what you've suggested in your other videos of getting a counselor, an image consultant, and finding where these high value men like. Oh, well, let's not, let's let's start with high value. First, we gotta do some basics. How tall are you? Uh, five two. Five two. Dress size. Uh, six. Okay. Um, how much did you weigh last time you weighed yourself? Uh, I weighed myself yesterday, and I was one thirty eight. All right. 138, five foot two. Yeah, you still need to drop out about 15 pounds. But here's the thing. I got to ask at 27, you know, moving around for, moving for women is problematic. Um, it can be challenging. So where do you plan on putting some roots? Uh, California, Los Angeles area. Oh, so you're going directly to the the fire. <laughs> All right. That's what our family is. So. Oh, all right. Well, let's go with it. Dating in Los Angeles is tough. I mean, some of the most beautiful women on the planet are in LA. And at 27 and not having any real long term dating experience, yeah, there's a lot that you're going to end up needing to do to be competitive out there on the dating market because you're running out of time. Yes. So, um, yeah, uh, that. I, you know, I don't know if there are any issues there. Therapist is always a good idea just to get a clean bill of health. But that image consultant uh, and matchmakers are viable options. You know, I've actually had people ask me about matchmaking, and I'm I'm thinking about it because um, I seem to have a talent for it. Um, but you can't waste time. That's what I would say for women like yourself. You cannot waste time. And the last, how do you typically meet guys? Uh, Hinge. Online? It's an app. Yeah. All right. But you said last, first you, you said you would tell the 90 days? Yes. Did you move or something? No. I messed that one up. How? Um, he wanted to lead it and I wouldn't let him. Uh oh. <laughs> yep. That was that person. All right. Well, uh, were you guys intimate? No. 
Have you ever been intimate? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm not understanding. In 90 days of dating someone, and you were not intimate. Um, he was often like on travel for his job. Okay. So mostly on our phones. Are you guys in the same city? Yes. All right, sis. Um, that should. What? He could travel. You could travel. But if you guys were supposed to be dating 90 days, no, no nothing? Yeah. He was gone for two of those, like 60 uh-huh. days. Yeah. So that doesn't even count as a relationship. No, not specifically, no. <laughs> so uh, are you. And when was this six month thing? Uh, it was when I was in school and. College? Yeah. All right, so you basically would classify as one of these women I would think would be kind of socially awkward. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's a different program, because I'm going to do that one next week. Um, but see, okay. you ladies, you know, you can't, this is not something you can just keep your head in the, in the sand and act like it's going to go away. Because the tendency for women like yourself is to to have play relationships. Get online and have somebody that you text back and forth with and you call it something that's not. And you look up and you're 40. I actually think these are, take these things very seriously. Okay? Okay. All right. Next, uh, when I talk about women who are socially awkward, that will be a good broadcast. But yeah, uh, book a session. Okay, because this you got to fix this. Um, Diana. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Let me, uh, let me mute you. You're actually playing in the background, but I have a question. So I heard you in your opinion and I respect that. Um, though I don't agree with it. I just want to know like, why baby, saying... do, 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 do. breathe. Oh, I'm breathing. Uh, <laughs> there's a, there's a process here. Hi, your name is. I'm Diana. Diana, hi, Kevin. How old are you? Um, I'm 21. All right. Um, you can disagree, but at 21 years old, uh, go ahead. You disagree, why? Yeah. Um, so in one sentence, you're saying women can't be independent um, as if that's a problem. And then in the next sentence, you're saying um, that they have to be submissive. And I agree. Um, hold, even on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't say that. You said in one sentence I said women can be independent or cannot be? Can. Can. Women can be independent. Yes. Then you say in another sentence I say they have to be submissive? Right. No, I didn't. You just said that. No, I didn't. Okay, so recall what you said. Oh no, you tell no, I know what I say. I didn't say women can be independent and then have to be submissive. Submission is a choice. Right. So, I agree. so, but my question is this. How long have you been watching me? Right. How long have you been, wa- how long have you been watching? Oh, this is actually like my, fr- I've watched a couple of your videos, but as far as live stream, this is my first. All right. And so, I see like, uh, something- uh, you cannot, I, I'm running a show, man. This just goes back and forth. I have, okay. You missed, you, you didn't quote what I said. But what's the problem with submission? No, I don't. I don't believe that there is a problem. I'm actually like, as I'm talking, looking at some comments. But that's the problem. That's in- problem number one. You shouldn't be doing that. I don't even look at comments. So I say, turn off YouTube. Oh, I'm talking about like right now as I'm talking to you. But so you I was should not actually- be looking at comments right now. You should be having a conversation with me. And I am. I'm responding to you. So I was actually going to answer your question. Is that okay? Go ahead. Okay, so I'm looking at, before I answer your question, I'm looking at the comments and I see some people saying I'm a feminist. I'm not. I hold definitely on, hold on. agree you're looking with at you. The, hold on, you're looking at the comments where? Um, On your live, as I'm talking. So I agree with you. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just Lord. said you're not supposed to be looking at the comments. But I can look at comments though. All right. See, what we have right here, is a confused young lady. I've, I've said number one, ma'am, you're moving too fast. 
You're all out of line. First off, you didn't even come in and say hello. How you doing? I did say hi. All right. <laughs> hello. How you doing? There's a proper way to do things. The, the, I needed to get some things out of the way. Number one, you said I said something I didn't say. You misunderstood or misheard. Number two, you shouldn't be looking at comments. I'm I'm running a show and I'm not looking at comments. I've said that four times, and you told me I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. And you are. I I never said I wasn't looking at the comments. Okay. I've been saying that. Time to play games with little girls. Uh, Tanisha, you calm yourself down. You can come back. Uh, Tanisha, you can come on back. Hey, Hello, how you doing? I'm, I'm doing well, thank you. Okay, so I'm the one who asked about you being married, and I wasn't trying to be condescending when I said that. But why that, is so. that important? Um, I just, this is just me and my train of thought. The people who give advice, like, you wouldn't want to be physically trained by a fat person, for example. So I just asked the question and just was wondering. But so, so, so... So you, mean, so you mean so you mean that um, a person who's married would give better advice? Well, I think a person who was in a marriage where the wife was submitting, or if she was a submissive wife, would give good advice. He, I'm not saying. That hold on, hold on. How about? But he would give good advice for his wife. Right. That's one person. Right, but at See, least the, pro have the, the problem with what you're saying, ma'am. Is if people mm -hmm. only spoke about what they were actually doing at that time, no one could speak about anything. Because no, that, that no, don't listen. Because that train never stops. Because what you're saying is, well, you should be married, and then your wife should be submitting, and then she should be submitting, and you should be working, paying all the bills, and then you should be black, and she should be black, and you should be from Texas, and you should have three kids, and you should be Christian. It never stops. See, so instead, why don't you just judge? Why don't you just judge the information instead of doing what we typically do in the black community and go ad hominem at the person? What was no. wrong? No, no, listen, listen. Okay. Because if you knew me, you know I've been married. I've run, <laughs> I've been over three singles ministries to three different churches, three different churches, and I know what I'm talking about. But okay. you put a test on there that makes makes no difference. I could be married. But mm -hmm. if I was two plus two is four, whether I'm married or not. Okay. But then again, like how she would now to be clear, I agree with Jeannie. Um, I think a woman should be submissive, but just by the definition of submissive, men have to give women something to submit to. Uh, so if, hold on, hold on. What? Are you married? Mm -hmm. I was married for eight years before I filed divorce for okay. divorce. Uh, are you Christian? I am. Okay. Still a Christian? Yeah. <laughs> to the day I die. Okay. Yeah. Um, then I'm going, this is going to hurt. Men is not supposed to give you something to submit to. You're supposed to submit to God. First. No, that, no, no. That's who you see. See, I'm a Christian and I've been over three singles ministries. This is black women have some of the most strange interpretations of the Bible. That's so why. Oh, that's not mm. that we Ma'am, you're not submitting to me. You're submitting to first off, who are you in, when you're in marriage? Who are you making? Who are you making the agreement with? You're making the agreement with God and with your husband. The covenant is with well, God, though. Correct. So you're, you're submitting and you're submitting and you're submitting to what in the man? You said what are you submitting to his mission? Submission. No, no, you're submitting to the God in the man. Okay. So that's what you're ultimately submitting to because man by nature is flawed. You don't submit to failed flesh. You submit to the spirit of the man, the God in the man. See, what you're saying is you if you actually were a Christian woman, you would be following God and submitting to the God in your man. You're going to follow God if you're a Christian. Well, then if that's the case, you said he has that's to give you something to submit to. And that's ultimately what you're submitting to. That's a given, but the no, it's man. Not. No, it's not. You're saying he has to give you something to submit to. That's <laughs> ultimately like what you're submitting to. Just like we submit to God, we also submit it to Christ in the flesh, right? So that's who he was. He was a fleshly representation of God. Hold on, hold on. So you submitted to Christ in the... What do you, no, no, I think you're conflating some things. But ultimately, ma'am, you said that man, if a woman should, should, needs to submit, a man needs to give her something to submit to. Like what? Correct. I think that's like what... what? As, well, have a plan for your life, first See, of all. again, again, 
Again, now you just went earthly. How? Uh, that God does not talk about a plan. Okay. He what, said hold on, said, ma'am. Hold on. Hold on. What was? Hold on. No, you're not going to talk over me. Hold on. Hold on. What was Eve's charge? To be his helpmate. Exactly. That's it. She didn't have to submit to his plan or whatever. She was there to help. That's he your already- role. Hold on, ma'am. That's your role. Your a woman's a woman's purpose on the planet is a man, and without a man, you are living uncovered. So I'm sorry, ma'am. You want to keep talking about a woman should have something to submit to. You're supposed to be submitting to the God in the man, not a purpose, not a plan, not anything else. Or else, if that's the case, you shouldn't have married him in the first place. But well, God has a purpose. God has a purpose and, here. And and, and and who? Did, okay, you're right. He has a purpose. And who does God speak that purpose to? Does He speak it to you, or does He speak it to the head? He speaks it to the head. Then exactly. So you're to supposed help. to follow the head. I'm supposed to help him. I, yeah, I agree. So you don't need to know the purpose. He does. Okay, Adam did not have to share that with Eve. All he had to do was know which way to go. But he had it. He had it. And a and lot of times. Uh, okay. And the thing is, your presumption is that then if he had it, then she has to, then she should submit. Right. And so you have to, as a woman, and you asked the question earlier, why are black women, I guess the word was scarred to the point to where we don't want, well, some of us don't want to submit. Well, it's what we have tried to submit to up until this point. And we've submitted to abuse. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. no. I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you do that on my channel. No, because on my channel, we talk about facts. You're going to talk about abuse. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, the facts, the data, statistics are in. You ladies talk about abuse like it's running rampant, and I'm sorry, the numbers just don't support. I'm not talking about only physical abuse. Uh, I'm talking well, about... Well, you want, to talk, you want to talk this stuff about mental abuse? I'm sorry. We can go the other way, ma'am. But how, how about this, man? You're a Christian woman. You filed for divorce. Why? I filed for divorce 15 years ago when I didn't have a complete understanding of marriage. Why? I saved I, in that instance he couldn't keep a job wow. okay he, he couldn't was keep, he was flipping so he providing he was not providing for the household i was for the so since we're talking about who take on the masculine role all right ma'am hold on hold on hold on hold on do you have any children one by him right so he wouldn't keep a job meaning that once y'all got married he just he quit working or he kept we losing were- jobs we were no, he wouldn't lose them. He would just leave and go to other jobs that he thought would be better, but uh-huh. they turned out okay. In 10 All years, right. we were all right. And then, where'd you go out? Okay, so hold on. And mm-hmm. uh, so, after you divorced him, where'd the child go? He's with me. All right, and did he have to pay child support? Nope, I did not file. All right, so where does the child have a relationship with his father? Uh, not a strong one but yes they all speak right so and 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 is he is the person and is the ex is your ex homeless uh i don't know i oh, don't okay. i don't all right myself. all right so um <laughs> whoo uh see here's the thing i i listen to a lot of women and i will tell you as after sitting in ministry after ministry after ministry i will tell you one thing one thing i've noticed about several of our most of our women you pick poorly, and then you're shocked with the outcome. At 24, most of us pick poorly. That, who's, that, I'm sorry, ma'am. But you, where's your father? My father's in California. And where's your mother? Uh, in Georgia. All right. Why was your father not there to help you pick a husband? My father was an alcoholic. Why was your father your father? Because my mother chose him. Exactly. Pick poorly and then blame the product. So what does that have to do with me? Uh, Well, <laughs> I said women pick poorly and blame the product. And you said at 24, I didn't have anybody to help me. And I said, where's your father? Right. Hold on. This is what it has to do with you because you picked poorly. If you had a father worth a damn, he could have helped you. But your mother picked poorly. And it sounds okay. like you, hold on, ma'am. And it sounds like you pick poorly. I'm not judging you. Hold on. I'm not I, judging I, you. Just... <laughs> um, why haven't you remarried then? Actually, to be honest with you, I enjoy being single. I, I bet you six... do. 
I do. I, I enjoy being single. I, I, you I you better it. enjoy it because I don't think I anybody else will want to put up with this. Because, see, the energy you come in at this thing, ma'am, look. I have suitors, but I enjoy uh, You can have enjoy suitors. Being Ladies, with. you can have suitors all you want to, but that shit runs out after about 50. You can have suitors all you want to. Bottom line is this. You came in and said, well, why isn't Kevin not married? Kevin has been married. Kevin knows what he's talking about. That's why people okay. come to my show. People don't come here because I don't know what I'm talking about. But what it does show is that, ma'am, you don't seem to understand what I'm talking about or what this means. Because you're by yourself. You have a son? I do. Oh, my God. So, um, well, what do you think mm -hmm. the prospects are going to be like for him? As far as the women that he chooses? Sure. I think the prospects are going to be very good. Really? Because mm -hmm. I do. Okay, honestly. okay. So how old is he? He's 10. 10. So um, I did a show last night um, asking if competitive, successful, or high-value black men should marry out. And um, to the woman on the panel last night, black mothers of black sons uh, were saying, yeah, because the young ladies today are pretty bad off. You think mm -hmm. you think the prospects are good for your son right now with with broken family after broken family? Because to be to be to to bring us up to speed, your mother married a man who had a problem with alcohol. You married mm -hmm. and that was a broken family. She mm -hmm. had to raise you by herself. You married a man. Well, she got remarried after my father. Okay. But okay. All right. Well, still, you married a man who couldn't keep a job. And have a, another broken family. So this will be the second or third generation. And you're raising a boy without a, a male role model and a dominant mother. Dominant mothers tend to make weak boys. Well, he's not weak. He's very assertive. You're, okay. You're right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where's his, and the male influence is where? Uh, throughout my church, mentorship programs. It's not like he's just, there's no male influence. Like there's no testosterone around him and he's just mm -hmm. dripping estrogen. Yeah. Uh, the black men, men have left the church in mass, ma'am. Right. So, Haven't left mentorship program. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. So I would tell you this, um, from what I'm hearing from his mother, you sound very domineering. No, I just sound like yeah. I know what I'm talking about. No, you can say that. You can sound just, yeah, you do. You're right. We don't. I don't know what I'm talking about. You sound just like. No, I didn't you're, say right. You, you're right. You you you're right, ma'am. The thing is, I got no dog in this fight. But I would tell you, you sound just like the energy is coming across, just like Lonnie Love, just like many women who no, have listen, many women who women who have poor relationships, poor relationship outcomes with men. But you're so combative, and you I'm don't. I'm not combative, man. I'm not combative. I'm just direct, and that's one thing women like you can't deal with. You're used to being in the driver's seat, and I won't allow you to drive. I'm driving no. this. That's not combative, ma'am. Street, but it seems to be one way. No, there's a right way. So, I hope the best for that young man. I really do. I really do. Some women just call to sit up and argue with you. Get their rocks off. I'm not going to let you get your rocks off. Enjoy. He's got suitors, though. <laughs> yeah, you got suitors. Now you need to go ahead and mute that in the background. No, you need to mute the YouTube channel. Y'all didn't know Lonnie was going to call into the show tonight. You're combative. Women like her don't know how to deal with a man who knows what he's talking about. Uh, Michelle, you need to unmute yourself and turn off the YouTube channel. How are you? Yeah. Good. Gotcha. So... Um, how about you men, successful men, married women like Jenny Mai, not Lonnie Love? What do you think about that? Well, I completely agree with Jenny Mai because she is, 
speaking the truth and what black women need to hear. But the problem is, is that I think that Lonnie Love came from a place of insecurity and a defense mechanism where I think she was trying to say that she wants to be heard in a relationship. However, I think that was communicated quite poorly. Oh, sorry, I don't think I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Um... Um, but I completely agree because I believe that there's power in submission and submission does not not equal weakness. And I think that's where Lonnie Love was mistaken. And I think that's where people were attacking her, whereas her approach was very much a defense mechanism. So let me ask you, in your relationships, do you feel like the men that you're with don't hear you? Oh, no, not at all, because I learned really early that me being, I did not like being dominant or leading whatsoever. It didn't make me feel in my feminine. And I didn't feel powerful at all leading, even when it comes to dates and et cetera, I would let the man lead absolutely everything because that's where I felt my most powerful. So that's where, that's why for many years, since I started dating for the few years, I've always let the man lead. Let me go ahead. So Michelle, hold on just a second. So to the previous caller, see how that just happened? When a woman comes in in her feminine, she can be heard because she's not trying to combat a man. Talking yeah. loud. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the previous caller, Michelle, just a second. Going back and forth. The reason I muted you is because you, caller, lack what this caller has. Mm -hmm. That's basically that's what you were saying, caller. Lonnie Love was communicating that she wants to be heard, but she it's hard for some... Men don't want to hear women that are coming at them in a masculine way. That's why I think this is a good follow-up call because this is what we as men naturally do when a woman comes across in a feminine way. We hear, we listen. So thank you for being a good example. Okay, thank you. Have a good one. You too. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah, bye bye. And I'm and I'm serious to the previous caller. You ladies think by going back and forth with the man that you're proving a point. All you're proving is you haven't learned anything. And that's why I said I feel sorry for your son because if that's how you talk to men, talk to men around him, he is learning that it ain't it don't mean shit to be a man. You mother, mothers of, of boys emasculate the French toast out of men around their boys and got the nerve to say, I, he's going to be a fine man. That boy is going to grow up. To, hopefully, I hope he has, uh, the, it ain't looking too good. I mean, I, I don't, it just doesn't work out. Domineering mothers don't raise strong sons unless they are blood relatives or committed mentors. Not, I just take him to church and he's around men. That woman has no idea what's going on. You picked a dude that couldn't keep a job? Well, they don't. Uh, why'd you pick a dude that couldn't keep a job? Did you, have, did you have suitors that were men who could keep a job? I didn't even get to the questions I normally would ask because I'm like, you're attitudinally unattractive. And I'm not saying this to be mean, but ma'am, your mother picked your father. It didn't work. And you said he was this. You picked your ex. And now you really don't even know where he is. So it's you. You came from a broken family like so many of us do. Now you got a broken family and it's all about you and a 10 year old boy that you cannot raise into manhood. And if you think you can, you are sorely mistaken. So I hope if somebody around you can hear this, can say, hey, sis, you need to sit down and breathe and listen to what that man was saying because you don't seem to realize your son is growing up into a world of women that operate completely different than even just 10 years ago. And if you're going to tell me, I think the future's looking bright, I don't know what, what you're looking at. Um, look. I call it the, the color purpling of the black community. 
How many times do we hear that women out here dealing with all this abuse, abuse, abuse? I'm going to do the show on abuse next week because I'm tired of hearing this bull crap. I, sorry, I do not see women being abused. I, I don't see women, I don't see black women being physically abused. Never really have. I'm going to just say it. I never really have seen black women being abused. In my entire life, I have known of one woman. And that was one of my mother's friends back in the 70s. One. And she and her husband, or she and her men, they would fight each other. One. Emotional abuse. I, I will tell you, the emotional abuse comes from women to men. Not men to women. And it's time we've had this conversation because I'm tired. There are so many of you women who hide behind this abuse. Da, da, da. Uh, you're the loud, strong, independent, sassy, sapphire coming out your mouth, blah, blah, blah. Y'all are far more quick to run out your mouth and talk crazy than anybody. So we're going to have that conversation because you, 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 you go back to it acting like black men have had this power over you guys to abuse and dominate, da, 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 prove it. Prove it. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's just another fantasy. I mean, think about it, bro. Think about it, man. Every time you hear it, abuse, abuse, abuse. I mean, and I've asked hundreds of people, have y'all ever witnessed a lot of domestic abuse? From no. No. Not once? No. Never? No. But we do see abuse. It's the other way. Talking crazy to men. Oh, don't tell me to educate myself. I mean, go ahead. I have educated myself, fool. And the problem is, I I know what I'm talking about, and men are tired of hearing the lies. I'm tired of y'all lying on men. I'm tired of I'm tired of women running around claiming abuse. Women should not be able to just say anything. You should have to prove what you're talking about. If you want to talk about abuse, I need to see some police reports. If you're honestly saying you've been abused, then you need to dial 911, call the police, generate a police report. I've asked this question, all, you know, and for the, every one time, and for you fools, and you educate yourself, look, lady, you don't know me. You, don't, you ain't been around here long enough to understand how many thousands of women you've heard say this. And then ask the proof and none. No, nah, it's not right. Abuse will prove it. Prove it. Prove it. See, you go, you keep saying it's, it's, it's real. Prove it. Prove it. Because some of you guys just believe in the boogeyman. Just because a woman says something, okay, then abuse is real. Then I guess, you know, <laughs> how many women have you seen being abused in your life versus the ones who claim it? Ask a woman why relationship ended. What did she say? Infidelity? Money, infidelity, or abuse? Did you ever file a police report? What happened? Nah. Sorry. Sorry. Document the abuse. And I'm sorry, I'm tired of seeing men's lives destroyed just on the word of what a woman says. I am not a believer of believe all women. I am for the fact you need to prove it because it is too easy for a woman to say something out of emotion or anger. Especially in this cancel culture, no thank you. You got men's lives being destroyed because somebody's saying he touched me or did something 30 years ago when we were in college. No, thank you. If it happened, then you should be able to prove it. If it was bad enough for you to have to leave, there should be some proof. And if you don't want to prove it, don't get mad if nobody wants to believe you. That's it. 
I'm open to being. I'm open to having the conversation, though. I'm open to hearing it. But I will tell you, in the over a year of doing this live show, I've had one woman, one that I actually think believe what happened. One. Go back and listen to the shows. But I've had countless women say it happened. When I asked the question, did you file a police report? No. He was actually hitting you and well, no, it never or well, we we got we got violent with each other. It's always more to it. And here's another reason it's, it's difficult to believe, because we we live in such a visible world. We have so many ways of documenting stuff now. Where are all these domestic tapes? Where are all these domestic videos? With a cancel culture. When you say it, when a woman says she's married to a family law attorney and he was smacking her around, I'm like, you can lose your law license. I'm sorry. You need to prove these allegations, not prove them, substantiate. You don't need to have a judgment, but you need to have something. And if that, and I'm sorry, ladies, if you cannot file, if you cannot make a 911 and file a police report, then you are not asking the public to believe you. You're just asking us to take your word for it. And I'm sorry, I cannot do that. It's too important. Keep on saying, keep on saying it. And, and if you don't like it, I will gladly block you. If you don't like what I have to say, you can leave. Because you can have an opinion. You, no, no. You're going to come up and prove it. Substantiate it. See, this believe all women thing. Because if it was your son, if it was your brother, if it was men in your family that you cared about, you would not be so quick to just say, well, if she said it, it must be true. Do you know how many times women have said men have done something? I went to college with three guys who sat in, and sat in jail for years because a woman claimed that they, that, they, that, that they took her when they didn't. She was going through the dorms that night asking guys that they wanted to get down. I didn't. And my frat brother was like, don't do that. It got back to her daddy, who was a big wig at a at a at a small oil company. It got back to her daddy that his daughter was being a little sloot bag. And when he confronted her, she either had to say, Yeah, I was going through the athletic dorms, giving it up to anybody who wanted it, or she had to cry something else. And she and, and that's what happened. I was on this. I testified at, at at the damn court before the grand jury. No, didn't happen. Got questioned. These guys went to jail because father was connected, and that girl got up on the stage and lied. No, thank you. So if you ladies say you believe everyone, all I'm saying is, hey. I have seen, and personally, my personal anecdotal experience, I have seen more men abused verbally. Cussed out, cussed up one side, down the other, emasculated in front of people to the point to where little bitty five foot nothing woman just nah, 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 nah. Sorry, ladies. Now, what world do y'all live in? And lastly, it may not be you, but you got to look around, ladies. A lot of women, well, a lot of women, far too many women today weigh as much or more than men their same height. So it's not like you're talking about 70, 80 years ago where a five foot eight or nine or 10 man was 160 pounds and a woman's a little 100 pounds. You're talking about a woman who's roughly, you know, five foot five, five foot six, 170 pounds, and he's five foot five, five foot six, 160 pounds, you're usually around the same weight. 
I mean, YouTube and World Star is full of videos with women just whooping dudes, but I'm here in New York City and I'm looking at, looking at all these number 10s. The dude look like this and she's like this. And I got to ask you ladies a question. Why can't we talk about this without you guys getting triggered? Why is it automatically that men are ignorant and you're not educated? No, I'm educated on the subject. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it's nearly, I don't believe when I just hear women say something happened and there is no record of it. Something as traumatic as that and you saying it's ongoing enough to cause a breakup of a marriage and there is absolutely zero documentation. Sorry. Don't buy it. So anyway, on to the next one. You know, um, that's just my personal opinion. Um, I don't think, and, I, I, and honestly, I don't think a lot of folks have seen it either. Um, what I'm seeing guys and they're saying they haven't seen it. I'm seeing women saying they haven't seen it. So uh, there you go. Watch out now. Look, ladies. Oh, right, let's back it in. Let's really do it. Let's woosa. Let's woosa. Let's woosa. Okay. How can Lonnie Love, Garcelle Beauvais, how can, let's just, let's get, how can black women win? All right, let me, let me grab a Red Bull and let's talk about it. Let me, let me, let me do this, let me do this, let me do this. Let me do this. All right. All right, let's do this. All right, let's do this. All right, Kevin, I hear you. Let me channel black. Okay, 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 Kevin, I hear you. We ain't shit. We the worst thing since sliced bread. We all jacked up. Don't nobody want us. Everything we say is wrong. All right. Granted. It's Wusa. How can we fix the problem? How can women fix the problem? All right. <clears throat> I don't want to be irresponsible here with the platform. I'll see you tomorrow. I don't want to be irresponsible. So I want to talk to the women who are feeling defeated, like there's no hope, and who want a different outcome. I don't want to. Those are the women I want to talk to. If I know women who have been all the way to the left, who have gotten their stuff going and, and have corrected themselves, like I say, if women in my family can get it straight, anybody else. But I would tell you what the women have said. They, they stopped trying to argue the obvious. Meaning, the obvious. Let's start with the visual. You got to stop arguing against reality. Men are visual and a man wants a visually appealing mate. Men ain't 50 years old, 40 years old out here trying to have a 30 woman rotation. Most, especially successful men, we got too much shit to do to be trying to to run, I mean, I will tell you this. A lot of guys are like millionaires. I would never get married. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, the more successful you get, the more money you make, the less time you have. You don't have time to have all these harems you think you're going to have. And you may have a little fun, but that's done. Look, man. So give, your, give men what they want. Be visually appealing. Hip to waist ratio. Flats. Get your stomach flat get toned and you really need to change your diet. And, you know, I, I know women that weigh their food out. I mean, what kind of man do you want? But whatever it is, you have to stop arguing with a reality. Fitness and, and, visi and being visually appealing, you're not going to change that. You got to get that done. Also, please 
take off those wigs. I'd rather you be hair that long than those wigs. I've seen some women that actually got a bald head who look better than they do in those wigs. Those things are from hell. Because I'm going to tell you, when it's hot outside, all guys, all guys thinking about is, damn, under there smells like Thriller. Let your hair do what it does. Learn how to do your makeup to accentuate your figure, your features. Not cover them or mask them. The weight, the visually appealing portion. Dress simply and concern dress simply. Get out of Fashion Nova and put on a dress, a skirt. Put on some heels, some things like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and answer. Tomorrow I'm going to get you in here. Go ahead. We got to do the visual appealing part. And then we got to get some therapy from a clinician to deal with any possible issues. Tomorrow, how are you? Hi, I'm well. What do you got for me? What did I get wrong? I don't believe that you got anything wrong. I actually agree with you. Uh-oh. And... <laughs> And I believe, like, from personal experience, similar to Jimmy Mai, mm. I understand where she's coming from because I was previously married. And in that relationship, I took on the masculine role because I was raised by the strong, independent Black woman. Mm -hmm. And now what I've, like, ascertained from my experiences and my failures is most Black women raise their daughters to be single mothers. Mm. And they don't understand how they're like undermining you by telling you, you have to be strong. You have to be independent. You, you know, don't let a man control you. You don't want a man to raise up on you because they prepare you for failure by teaching you all these defense mechanisms for the men that may have fell short in their lives, but hmm. they never equipped you with the tools to be able to go out into the world and identify what, like a wholesome man really is. Oh my and God. Go ahead. Due to that, we have to then retrain ourselves as adults because after my divorce, like when I went to therapy and when I just looked around like my community and my sisters of circle my my sister circle, what like I deduced from all of that was because we did not have the skills to be able to identify what a man is when we went out we just took whatever felt like emotionally good and when you're a strong person if you run across someone who i guess a, a man who's less than who's needy who's looking for a mother mm -hmm. that feel comfortable because you're so independent and you're used to being in charge and you're, you're used to being domineering and aggressive that his like, like, you know, he's the submissive one and you're the dominant one and it feels natural. But then after a while, all women want to be feminine. All women want to be protected and taken care of. So when he, he doesn't step up to that role, to fill that role after a while, you then become resentful because mm -hmm. he's, in, he's unable to do so. And instead of looking at it as you chose him and this is the person you chose and he lacks these qualities, you start to berate him. You start to degrade him. You start, you try to change him. And of mm -hmm. course he doesn't possess the ability to be the person you need because most of the times he was raised by a woman, just like your mother. And he got dependent on women to tell him mm -hmm. what to do. So he can't lead you. So it really all comes back to us, to ourselves, to like doing the inner work. And sometimes it's hard for us to admit because even though you may be feeling lonely, sometimes you do need to be by yourself a little bit just to figure out like, do you have the tools necessary to make a relationship work? Especially if you grew up in a household where you did not have an example of what that relationship is, you may need to go out and learn it or take advice from someone who possesses the ability to teach you that and be receptive to hear it. Mm. Uh, church, I, I would. There's nothing to stop you. You, 
that was an entire five minute uh dissertation on <laughs> I'm serious. There's nothing I mean you you hit the nail right on the head. And I'm glad you said it. Because when you said mothers are raising their daughters to be single mothers, I knew where you were going because they do raise them to be in this defensive position, always looking for the negative, and that's exactly what it attracts. So, yeah, I appreciate you calling in, sis, though. I'm going to cut that out make it its own little video. Where did I send your check? <laughs> I need to send you a check for that one. Appreciate it. Nice talking to you. All right. Now, shout out to, to the caller. She... An unintended consequence of baby boomers is they raised a generation of stronger women and softer men. I've been saying this for 30 plus years. And then you got a, a women that were told you don't need no man. Get out there, get a job. Don't let no man come up off of you. All this other stuff. That's what mothers told Mothers told their daughters that, and then they told their sons to be nice, respectful, da, 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 da. And then you take both of these two people, and they reach 18 years old, and you turn them out into the world, and they look at each other, and they're drawn to each other physically. But he's weak. She's strong. She's used to domineering. He's used to hearing domineering, so it seems comfortable, and it works for a little bit, but then she can never rest because she wants to be feminine and be covered but he doesn't possess the tools because he's always been used to being up under his mother's skirt. He ain't been over here and been punched in the face. So he need to go somewhere and get his ass whooped and become a man. And she need to go over here and sit her hot pants down somewhere and, and, and learn how to become a woman and get their both of their heads right. And then maybe they can come back on the other side. But nobody wants to take that time. It takes time to undo this mess that we got. No one did it on purpose. But then, if you don't undo it, you can never get out of that hole. Uh, our, I'm going to take this person. Uh, five, go ahead. Hi, what's your first name? How are you? I'm good. What did I get wrong? Um. Well, you know what? I got to say, I definitely agree with most of what you said, but I think that part of the reason on why women tend to have um, the defense mechanisms up is because in the beginning, when you first start dealing with men, right? If you, it, I, you know, this sounds bad or whatever, but if you don't come off a little strong, I'm not saying with all of them, but with a lot of them, usually they, they do try to take advantage of you. You know what I mean? I can speak from my own experiences. If you, don't come, me, off, if you don't come off strong with men? No, no, no. Let me, let me clarify. What I mean when I say come off strong is that very often when you show that soft side of yourself in the very beginning, for some reason, it comes across as if you may be naive. Okay. At least that's what I've gotten. How old are you? Um, I'm 34. Okay. Um. I deal with feminine women mm -hmm. and they come off initially as soft and as feminine as they are. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't hear this from them. See, consider yourself to be one of the exceptions. Well, well, but, but let, me, let, let me, let me, let me, can I, can I, can I give you a, let me, I'm going to tell you why I don't hear from them. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you do for a living? I work in law enforcement. Okay. Um, Danger zone. One of those professions that I've to. <laughs> All right. So, what kind of men are you? What kind of men are you drawn to? Funny. That is so funny because I know what you're probably thinking. Oh, I've already made three videos about. I've said the women, the high value and successful men avoid. I make no mistake, make no bones about no. it. Psych chicks. But believe it or not, oh. I'm actually the opposite, though. Okay. Believe well, I didn't say it doesn't happen. I mean, psych chicks, nurses. I, I, trust me, it's going to be kind of funny one of these. Yeah, days. I mean, but, but here's the thing: what kind of men are you are typically drawn to you? All right, I'll give you an example. I dated a guy, right? He's in law enforcement. And he got out of a relationship with his wife, 
right? They were married for a very long time. And he said that, and he confirmed just what you said. He said, a lot of people think that it's the man that abuses the woman. He said, but contrary to belief, she actually abused me for most of our marriage. You know, she, he, you know, he raised a child that he had to find out wasn't biologically his. She took him through a lot. You know, he brought her home and she was having an affair most of the marriage and everything. So, but in short, right? As we begin to start getting to know each other and, you know, I had to deal with all of the baggage that he had from his marriage. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. How long had you known this man? A year. And when you found out all this stuff, Mm -hmm. this was in the what, what, the first two or three months? Yeah, yeah. So let me stop you right here, sis. You should have been looking for the door. You did not have to deal with anything. You chose to. Well, no, that's true, but I want to give him a chance. I mean, uh-uh, you fr- uh-uh, uh-uh, see, right here. See, uh-huh. I'm, I'm going to tell you why the feminine women I deal with don't have any problem being, women I deal with are not a, only accustomed to being treated a certain kind of way. Right. When they come to my, listen to my show or some of the things I tell them about, they're like, what are you talking about? Mm. I have to kind of tell them, well, there are women who get these experiences like what? Because they've been feminine their entire lives. And they only get a certain caliber of men. They don't, these women don't even, they walk up to the door and they, if the door doesn't open for itself, they'll just stand there. Because they expect you to open the door. And you, guess what? They get the door opened. And what I'm saying, ma'am, is you, we all choose. So let me, let me reframe the question. The law enforcement mm-hmm. guy that you said, you found all this about. Let's just say, you had the mm-hmm. law enforcement guy, and then let's just say you had a hedge fund manager, and he was making four hundred thousand dollars a month, and, right. he, and his and he was as a, as attractive or more attractive than this guy. You had the same vibe, same everything. He had everything you wanted and more, and he had a clean bill of mental health, all this other kind of stuff. <laughs> Which one would you have chosen? <sighs> You know what? That's a hard question for me to really answer. And, wow. I, and the only reason, the reason why is because I didn't necessarily have a problem with the fact that he whoa, had whoa, issues. Whoa, 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 I give you a healthy, functional man and a man with baggage, and that's a hard choice? I mean, I, well, I, I, the reason why I say that is because don't we all have baggage at some point? You know? I give you a healthy, <laughs> functional man... <laughs> And a man with baggage, and that's well, a choice. Yeah, since you put it like that, yes, yeah. But see, what, I, what, what I'm showing you, ma'am, is it's the men you pick. That's why I'm ultimately getting to you is you saying that it's the men that do this and that. I'm like, no, no, no. You saying you got to be hard because they'll 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 play you if you're naive. And I'm like, no, no some women, not well, myself. Well, but well, see, the thing is, I will tell you the women I deal with will listen to what you say and tell you, I don't. Deal with men who are broken. Power to the psychic. I mean, I'm just telling you, you, first of all, I laugh because I've done a program on women that women that men need to avoid. And one of them are called advanced degrees. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. hold on. I'm a PhD. That's one mm-hmm. one uh, I'm a PhD. Uh doctors, lawyers, military, uh police officers or women that were married to military or police officers or lawyers or doctors, nurses, psych chicks, um, massage therapists, nail technicians, bartenders, actresses. These women are, are tend to be women in a void. And there, but, and there are always people who could fall in those categories who don't meet those things. But what I'm hearing from you is a strong personality. Nah, yeah, you're you're prejudging me. Definitely. I said what I'm here. Okay, in the chat room, do you mm-hmm. think in the chat room, ladies and gentlemen, do you think the woman on the phone is a strong personality? What do you guys hear from her personality? Actually, I babied him too much. Okay. That was. I'm asking. Problem. I'm asking people mm-hmm. in the chat room. What do you guys hear? Yeah, that's cool. I understand. That's I'm not fine. prejudging you. I'm telling you what I hear, ma'am, and I speak to women. Monday through no, Friday. No, I get it. I didn't get to say very much, but, but no, but I get thing, it. But I the mean, thing that, is, man, but but see, you're a police officer. You're law enforcement, right? Correct. Okay. I, I'm also, what I do, I'm used to reading people. I read people every day. And I know what I'm reading. 
So I don't need to, I don't need to know everything. I'm telling you, even the way this interaction is going, it's not a it's not a judgment, ma'am. I'm just telling you the way you're coming across. No, I, I, listen, I don't have an issue with that, not at all. Well, you said you think I'm prejudging you. I do, but I'm not I'm not upset or anything. All right. You know. And the thing is, um, if if given an opportunity between a man who doesn't need you and a man mm -hmm. who needs you, which man do you want? I want a man that doesn't need me. Okay, well then when I asked you about the man who doesn't need you versus the man who does, you said that would be a hard thing because don't we all have problems? No, no, I understand exactly. Yeah, no, I get it. But like, you know, from what I from what I ascertain from talking to different men and stuff like that, like you say the weight with women is an issue, and it is. Right. But sometimes we're put in a position where we can't win for losing, quite honestly. OK, uh, we talk about the weight. Uh, whose responsibility is that? Um, A lot. But I, I have men tell me I'm too thin. OK, hold on, 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 hold on. I said whose responsibility is the weight? No, I, I'm saying we're responsible for our weight. Right, right. So uh -huh. you, you said you had men tell you. To, so how tall are you? I'm almost 5'8". And dress size? Six, because I weigh 146 pounds. Okay. I would almost guarantee you that the if you had men who are making substantially more money, you would not hear them tell you you're too thin. Oh. Broke men broke men tend to like big women. Look at I mean you look across any gener any any race, the more money a man tends to make. The more fit a woman tends to be, and the larger her ring is. I mean, yeah, no, no, that's true. But black men, they'll be like, "You ain't got you. You need some more ass. You need some more hips, and you need more okay, this." You, okay, okay, you said black. You said black men like we're all the same. I'm talking about no, not black. all of you, not well, you all of you. But you what said, I'm saying, hold on, ma'am, listen. Mm -hmm. You said black men would say you need some more hips. You need some more ass. And in that yeah. state, listen. And in that statement, you said black men. I fall in that category, and so does the dude in the county. I'm sorry. There's a big difference between me and the dude in the county. I don't tell you you need more ass and hips. I tell you you need to get on the goddamn treadmill and get them abs together. We're different. And see, far too often, black women just act like we're one big black man. That's why, no, I, I, focus, that. that's why no. I focus on men who are successful, competitive, high value. They are different than guys who are Madden Kings and living on your couch because one group of men, <laughs> one group of men sis don't need you. We want you, but we don't need you. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. And then, but have you ever dated? And, and here's the real truth. Can you honestly say you've ever had mm -hmm. a serious relationship with a man who did not need you financially? Yeah. Huh? Absolutely. I was in a six year relationship and we didn't get married because his cancer got worse. And he decided that he didn't want to leave me like that. And he's actually, you know, at his last stages now. And it was his decision to say before it got that bad, to, I want you to move on and try to, you know, he was significantly older than I am. Um, and we were in a six year relationship. It started out in 2014 and it ended sometime before COVID because things got worse with him. And um, how old are you again? I'm 34. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we got together, you know, he oh, had okay. the camp. I don't, and I'm, yeah. I'll leave that one. Alone. But here's the thing: mm -hmm. I hear women say that we can't show our femininity or our, or, or our softer side because it'll be taken for a sign of weakness. I just, right. I, and that's just outright, that's outright incorrect. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I have a group of women that in my Facebook group. 300 plus women in there who lead with their femininity and they're already, right. there are four couples in there already. And one and one's leaning toward is about to get engaged. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I see that's maybe what you believe, but it sounds to me, ma'am, is you're dealing with a certain kind of man. Can I clarify something right quick? Go ahead. I just want to clarify something. I didn't say all women and I didn't use myself as an example necessarily. I said, I do understand why some women do not deem it necessary to necessarily have to I mean, show their femininity in the very beginning 
out of fear of being taken advantage okay, of. Okay, so let so let 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 me flip that up. Let me let me flip uh-huh. it around. Let me flip it around. So uh, so uh, five. Some men don't show their masculinity up front for fear of being taken advantage of. Right. It's possible. It's possible. What? Yeah. And the reason why I say, say that say what say say it in your say say what I just said in your own words. I want to make sure that, that it makes some sense. men do not show their masculinity in the beginning out of fear of being misunderstood. No, no, right? Being taken advantage or of. Being taken advantage of or whatever. And that makes sense? It doesn't, but I can't say that it doesn't happen. And the reason why I say that is because some men who are very masculine have been told or you know that they no, need to sort of no no okay allow Man. me to finish babe listen can i just can i just fin- let me just get it out right quick <laughs> allow me to please <laughs> go ahead some some men have been told that their masculinity comes across as intimidating i know a guy who's like six five and he has a complex Whatever. that every room will. that he walks into people think that they need to fear him because of that you know what I mean, and that's not something that he no, can control. No, I don't. But... No, I don't, because you're basically telling. So, so basically, he should walk mm-hmm. around switching with a switching and acting feminine because he. No, t- I don't think so. Listen, no, okay, I don't let think you finish so. Now, hold on, <laughs> ma'am. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make no. any. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, and I'll let you keep go on and go on with it. And what you said doesn't make any sense either. But it's all you. It's what you got. And what you what you're ultimately saying is coming from a place of fear and scarcity. That's possible. No, no. Saying that you cannot be what you are for fear of someone taking advantage of you is coming from fear. Yeah. No, I'm telling you, I, I agree. It's possible. Well, then, then be around a different caliber of man so you can be who God made you to be. Because there are women who are as feminine as, as you say you are or more. I so wish I could make a phone call right now and put, anyway. Oh my God. I mean, you know what? Go to my Instagram. Check. You tell me if you feel that I look intimidating. I'm willing to let you I, go I see. Don't, I don't need. I, I, if you I, say I that, if do, you look at me, you say you okay, look ma'am, like you beat me okay, up. Ma'am. No, ma'am, but what I'm saying is your energy is very. A crest is, is very masculine. Just I, you know what? I'll work on it. Going through the academy may do that to a woman. Well, it does. And this is one. Okay. And here's the thing. <laughs> this is one of the reasons I will tell you that my guys that are on my level, clients, my clients, they, these, when I said the women that these guys avoid, they, they avoid them because those are masculine professions. The police academy was not created for women. Oh, come on. I just made a statement of fact. Uh, are you trying to say the police academy was created for women? I'm going to I'm going to plead the fifth because I know how you get down. No, ma'am. I'm just asking a logic. I'm just, are you saying the profession of policing was created for women? I mean, see, I was raised to believe that we can all do it. You know, do everything. You know. Oh, we, we can. can oh, we can. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> you have to do the same physical requirements that men have to do. Yeah, there's no, there's no. Okay, so, yeah. so, so, so for to be a, so to be a firefighter, mm-hmm. you have to be able to do a, a two hundred pound dead man carry. Women can do that too. Yeah, I mean, if I was able to get sucker punched and get back oh, up, no, with no, 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 problem, man. no, 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 no. See, you didn't answer my question. I said a two hundred. You believe that men and women can do the same things physically? Well, it's being proven every day. They are, though. They are. I mean, I've been on an all-male unit, and I've seen women have more heart than the men on there in the prison system. Let me tell you something, ma'am. Let me just go right there. If I wanted to whoop your ass, it wouldn't be shit you could do except take it. You are, not my, you are not my you are not my equal. I'm tired of you women walking around here thinking that you're a man's equal. You ain't my equal because we allowed you to have a job that you ain't qualified for. Policing is not a female profession. It's a male profession. Just like the, I hope you could whoop my because ass. Because it is a male profession. It is a yeah. male profession. Now see, now I'm about to go there. See, you you're talking crazy now. You're talking crazy. 
Police Why? I'm actually for, being I'm for, being lighthearted. But, but I'm goodness. not being lighthearted because this this shit is too much with our sisters. Y'all actually think y'all are like goddamn men. I'm telling you, man. Ma- all right, all right. I'm not gonna argue with you. You are not a, we are not equals. And just because you think that a woman over here, a woman over here can look, can do something a man can do, you are not physically as strong as a man. You're not even created to be that way. And this is part of the problem with women in your line of work. You lose mm-hmm. all masculine, you, you lose all feminine point of reference to where you even start answering questions. You, you're conflicted about shit that should be conflicted. You mean the mm-hmm. army was created for women? Firefighters were created for women? So can I ask you a question? I, you mean all those all those professions were created with women in mind? No, I mean, I know that it wasn't, but I want to still ask you a question. So let's say, like, if your daughter said, Daddy, I want to go into law enforcement and make a difference, especially in the climate that we're in currently, would you tell her that it was never created, you know, for her? You're goddamn do right. Okay. Without blinking. I mean, I respect that. Like I said, because you could have because you could have that uniform on and everything else, and I could still boot a man. Could you are not a goddamn man, and we have let women think that there is no difference, and there's a problem, man. Because mm-hmm. even when I say you come across in your masculine energy, this that it, you really, I, I get it that you don't get it because you're you're used to being this way. So you the, to you this is normal, and you see yourself as the woman that you are. But I'm telling you, go back and look in the chat room. And go look at all the men and the women writing down masculine. It's not just men, it's women. That's cool. So that's what the world reads. And I will tell you, women with your energy draw conflict. You draw conflict, meaning you draw side chick or one night stand energy or weak men. Men are not drawn to women, I'm not saying you, but women like you, not drawn to women like you with the desire to provide and protect for you because you look like you can do it just fine. So we just need to get it in, bend over the couch, (laughs) and I'm going to leave and go on by my business. I mean, and and that's the thing. So, I mean, you walk around with a gun and shit, and and, and it's like, all right, well, I mean, you, you don't look like you need us. So, all right, sis, appreciate it. You know That's damn well. Up. You know damn well. Cops wasn't made for no women. No, listen, listen. Just you know what though? Can I tell you something before we hang up? Go ahead. Listen, listen. You have valid points. You know what I mean. You definitely do. But and I, you know, I just got to keep it one hundred with you. When you get women on here and we're trying to explain stuff to you, it would be a little bit nicer if you at least let us get it out. Because sometimes you don't. Well, the times I don't is when. Um... Well, if I don't, it's because I've read. Okay, you're an officer. When I've read bullshit, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't let bullshit ride. If I believe the point well, is going to be I made, understand. I understand. I don't but still that. give the woman a chance to be heard, though. That's well, all man, I'm saying. I don't want to. Here's the thing, man. I, I'm running a show with 5,600 people. And I'm not trying to let all things be heard because I know sometimes it's bullshit. And one last thing: women who are plus sized. What about You're it? right. You cannot be fed. You're right. Well, I mean, you're right. There you go. You no, know, you're right. All right. But at, at the same time, though, you know what I mean. At the same time, a woman that's plus sized or whatever, it. We all know there's someone for everyone. See, that, that's that bullshit. That's that bullshit. <laughs> See, that's that bullshit. Right. That, that's that bullshit. That's that bullshit. Somebody somewhere a lover, and we and telling that women like that will keep women losing. No, no there is no. not. To, there's Look someone there's someone oh, hold on. okay then so you're telling women don't so you would tell them what go ahead and be plus I would, size i would tell them i would tell them make your health your priority you know what i mean but don't necessarily chase aesthetics because some you know you you if, if you whoa if, whoa, if, whoa, whoa, make, whoa 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 uh, if you want a man you better chase aesthetics because we're visual what are you talking but about you wait but what happens when there's something you can't please everybody? You just can't. Uh, see, see, again, this is why you ladies need to listen to me and not women because you get this duplicitous. Well, you can't. Well, here's the thing: you please, you be as pretty as possible. That's what you need to be as pretty as pretty possible. Possible, I agree. Pretty as possible, and you need to keep your weight 
down because your great great grandmother wasn't no 170 pounds. There you go. Peace out, sis. Y'all out y'all mind. I'm not gonna have y'all just sit around telling women, oh, you know, lose the weight. Lose the weight. Lose the weight, you know. Shout out to the caller though. You're getting late. Um, so here's the thing. Cooperative women get chosen. Cooperative women who are fit, fit single cooperative, fit cooperative single women get married. How about that? Let's just go ahead and write. Fit cooperative single equals marriage. Fit cooperative single. I didn't even put a, I didn't even put a beauty standard on it. Fit cooperative single. Because most people are average anyway. If you average looking, fit cooperative and single, you'll have a husband. Godfather approved. Fit cooperative single husband. Fit cooperative single husband. Fit cooperative single equals husband. You don't think so? Go out to Manhattan. I'll show you 50, 11 million plain Jane white dudes walk around with plain Jane white girls. He's fit. She's fit. They married as French toast. Prove me wrong. Get cooperative. Get fit. Be single. Carry your ass out there and see don't you find a husband or don't the husband find you. So I'm saying. Now, the cooperative piece. See, if you're cooperative, submission, that's a negotiation. Depends on who you're dealing with. You know, the higher up you go, the more submission is going to be required. But at the end of the day, choosing to live a life where you're doing this whole thing right here. I'll do what I want. That'll keep you single. But see, you can have your PhD. I'm a PhD. You can be even in the danger zone. But if you have things going for you, danger in the right zone. Place, you can recover. I was saying to the women, ladies, as pretty as possible, rock your own hair, find a style that works with your hair. Wear makeup that accentuates your natural features. You got to get fit, ladies. We need to see your collarbone. We need to see your stomach flat. Get that stomach is flat. Flat, not waist trainer. Abs and planks and Pilates flat. Yes. Portion control. Water, plant-based diet. Yes. 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 Put on some heels. Get rid of them damn Timberlands, you know, and sneakers and shit. Put on some heels. Mm, yes, I want to see the heels. I want to see your calf. We want to see the pelvic tip that way. That ass need to sit up like this. Yes. Pop, ping. Yes. I need to be sitting across from you thinking about smashing. That's right. Don't let this shit fool you. Sitting across in a three-piece suit at midnight. I need to sit across from you thinking about smashing. When we talking geopolitics or whatever, whatever, I need to be thinking, I am going to wear you out. That's how, I mean, what do you think? We're visual. That's what needs to go through our mind. That's part of the inspiration part. Your man should grab you in his... Uh, your man should... Uh, I don't want to say it. Mm. Your man should grab you around your waist and start um, getting excited. If your man is not looking at you and like uh, ready to go, something's a problem. And you should look at him and he should be competitive, productive, and doing what he does to where you starting to you don't need Red Bull condoms and candy. You you ready to go right there. So I'm saying. Human beings are pretty damn simple when it gets right down to it. We're made one to one for each other. And at the end of the day, there's always going to be a relationship that happens between one man and one woman. But if you're as pretty as possible and he's increasing and improving, that shit tends to work. Nothing's perfect. See, I'm not perfect. I'm fucked up. I am fucked up. I got issues. I got drama and all kinds of stuff. We all got things. You crazy. I'm crazy. That's cool. See, 
What you really need to ask yourself is, does your crazy match my crazy or does your crazy make my crazy go nuts? That's really what it comes down to. Because when all you need is one, and then you just carry your ass on off and get your Jenny Mind Jeezy on, while everybody else is back on doing this other stuff, and you go on down with life. And I think we need to start having these conversations. Ladies, you need a man. Stop saying you don't need a man. Yes, you do. You do need a man. Yep, you need a man. I think it'll strengthen women admitting they need men. I think it's dangerous for women to walk around talking about they don't need men because you really start believing that you can run this shit like we can, and you can't. There's no weakness in saying that you cannot do what we do. Thank you, Jenny Mai, for saying it. You cannot do like we do. Nor should you want to. You should want to do what you do well. Men doing what when when a woman is doing in her space, men, we are naturally wired to want to protect and provide. Matter of fact, I'll tell you a secret. Most men can't even help it. You can't even turn it. You can you can mute that switch, but it's just in you. So if you've never seen this as a woman, I would suggest go get detach, get you some therapy, get still, get quiet, take about six months off, get your head clear, and, and then start getting around a different caliber of women that are moving a different way, have a different energy, have different expectations and outcomes for their interactions with men, and start reshaping what you think of the opposite sex. And while you're in there, while you're in that in that six months to a year, you're in the gym four days a week. You're getting a healthier diet. You're, you're 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 eating healthier. Da da da. Look, you will be a much better person and much better to be around. And I will tell you, even if you don't find Boaz, your life will be happier because you'll be easier to be around. And people like being around women who lighten the mood and are a joy. I know I do. So, anyway, let me get up out of here, y'all. I got things to do. 5,500 people, 3,000 folks watching. Shout out to all the callers. Thanks to everybody that called, you know. It's almost 1 o'clock. <laughs> all right, well, tomorrow is Suit Saturday. Live from Manhattan tomorrow, Suit Saturday. Got some things going on here. Tune on, tune in to Instagram in case I do decide to have an impromptu meetup here in Manhattan. I'm supposed to pull out on Sunday. Maybe. Maybe Sunday, maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday. I'll be back by Wednesday for sure. Got to sleep, then head out to uh, L.A., Beverly Hills, see what's going on out in COVID Central. All right, people, your godfather's here. I'm, And if I decide to do an impromptu show, tell him to get back with time. Oh, uh, and if you, in case, and one of the best ways to stay in shape, somebody said tell him to get Peloton. Peloton, indoor cycle. Yeah, we're going to start working on things to give you the women who are leaning towards wanting help to give you some hope. I can see that. I want you to have hope because there are a lot of guys out here who are increasing and improving. And uh, they're here. You're here. I'm not going to ask them to come down. I'm going to ask you to come up and be found. That's what's going to happen. But yep, we got to get up out of here. Till next time, you know how it goes. Peace. We are gone. I know y'all missed the light show, right? In this moment, yes, I cannot say what's wrong. going on trying to find the next ex-wife that's right taking applications <laughs> y'all crazy don't be surprised
Good evening. Peace. We're out.